so close. Look at that. And then over there. Do you see that? Hyacinth. Look! Look! Oh my gosh! Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the start of a new vlog. I am pulling out my ranunculus, anemones, and sweet peas for the third day, I think, this week. The sweet peas, I think, are totally ready. They're ready to be planted. That's going to happen for sure. Um, and I think the anemones and ranunculus maybe need, like, one more day. But yeah, everything is looking so good right now. Things are about to burst into bloom. Hello. Andrew and I are getting ready to go to a local pub for dinner, so I'm going to put on some makeup before we go. I uh, wanted to show you, I got this new blush. I really love blushes, in case you couldn't tell. I have a lot, I wear a lot of blush, and I like experimenting with a lot of blushes, and an influencer, the influencer being influenced, um, showed this by Terry liquid blush, and the color looks so beautiful on everybody that I've seen it on. That I had to try it so I'm gonna give it a go. There's only two colors of the blush and one of them is more like a bronzing color so this is the only one that's actually like a colored blush but it's so sheer that I feel like you could probably really build it up so yeah I'm excited to give this a go and then I also got these two uh, samples of their Balm de Rose and a Balm de Rose mask. I'll be honest, my only other by Terry purchase I have I did not like. It was an eyeshadow palette, and the quality of it was just not good compared to like how expensive it was. I really did not like it. I even like went on their website to like look at the reviews after I received mine to see if anybody else thought the same thing. And there were a few people that said that had like the same complaints that I did, but um, not that many. So I don't know if it was just the one I got, but yeah, I just did not care for the eyeshadow palette that I got. It just hard panned a lot. It was, yeah, kind of gross. Anyway, all right, but I'm hoping this one will be a better experience. Let's try it out. Speaking of makeup, um, I showed you guys this stuff in like a recent Sephora purchase um, in a previous video, the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation, the Huda Beauty, uh, cream contour and then I repurchased these uh, blushes and oh my gosh I love all of these like the blushes I already knew that I liked because I've purchased them before but the contour and the uh, foundation were new to me and I was very curious about this one in particular because I'm looking for like a wedding day foundation or more of an events thing I don't wear a foundation every day it's just kind of like if I'm feeling like it, but I'd say like I maybe wear foundation once every two weeks, if that. Um, but all of these were purchases that were inspired by uh, Alana Davidson's YouTube channel. She's a beauty influencer, and I have loved every single thing I have purchased on her recommendation. She is just like such a joy to watch, honestly. But this uh, bronzer and contour was like a real find. I've been really into cream products lately. I feel like they just look better on my face. So yeah, I've really been enjoying those and wanted to report back because I've been wearing them pretty regularly. And then this is also a recommendation I got from her a long time ago, and I've just been repurchasing it ever since. Um, it's the Makeup Forever Concealer, and I really, really like this and recommend this too. You can smell the pollen in the air. My nose is literally tickled just standing beneath these trees. Here's how the makeup looks. See, very natural pink flush color. I really, really like it. We're headed to the local pub. I'm gonna go get some dinner, a beverage. Sixteen, bud. 
Back home, I have my book, I have a blanket, and I'm hoping for a cuddly cat to come and join me. Good morning, everyone. I left my ranunculus and anemones out for the first time last night. You can see um, the hardening off process is good for them. The hardening off process is really good for them because you can see if I left them in the greenhouse, they would still be moist and wet, but you can see how light brown the soil is compared to some of them on that last tray of ranunculus over there, but like those right there, how light brown the soil is, the wind dries them out faster. So that's why we have to harden off the plants because if we just put them straight out into the garden they wouldn't be able to like moderate their behavior they have to like learn to hold on to their moisture so I'm gonna water definitely these two trays today because I can see they need it that one's probably okay and then just continue the hardening off process for a couple more days until I feel like they're ready to be planted. The weather is certainly ready. The sweet peas could be planted anytime. I've decided I'm gonna put some on this trellis right here that I made. And then I'm also gonna put a wall of sweet peas right here. I might do some more along the back fence if I can find a suitable space for them, but there's other things I want to put over here. So I mean, I'm thinking here and on that trellis. There's not really a place to put sweet peas at the Arbor Garden. That's the other garden. Um, I used to have a stick trellis like this one over there, but I took it down because I put a rose there instead. <laughs> rose obsessed. I suppose I could put some climbing on the Arbor. So I might do that. We'll see. Yesterday, I also brought my dahlias, uh, dahlias, dahlias, dahlias. I watch so much British TV, honestly, and like so much gardening and most of the gardening programming is British TV <laughs> that I just get so used to pronouncing things in the British way. Anyway, the dahlias, um, I brought the dahlias out into the greenhouse because I'm having a little bit of trouble spotting the eyes on some of my own tubers that I've kept in storage so i don't really know like how i can divide them so i need to bring them so i needed to bring them out into the greenhouse so they get some sunshine because they'll start to eye up um, and butt up if they get some direct sunlight so it'll make it easier some of them i'm not sure if they're gonna make it like this one is quite well it's not yeah i mean they're kind of shriveled it's some tubers it's hard some are make better tubers than others it's hard to know i might be able to rehydrate this a little bit you really don't want to water dahlias much at all um before planting them because they can rot away before they get a chance to sprout but i might take a chance with some of my more shriveled tubers just to try to rehydrate them a little bit and I just love this rose campion foliage. Look at it, look how soft that is. Can you hear it? It's amazing. And it's got this really beautiful like silvery green color to it. Oh, so beautiful and so soft. I love this. This is one of my most anticipated plants this year, for sure. That and I cannot believe I actually got Verbena bernariensis to sprout. <laughs> I had so much hardship with this one last year. I could not make it happen. So I'm excited that I will have some Verbena bernariensis in my life. Some of them already have eyes and are starting to sprout and eye up like that. So it'll be easy on some, but not for all of them. Like, I don't think this is gonna make it. <laughs> Do you remember in a previous video I snipped off the tops of all of my sweet peas to discourage the apical dominance so that they would start to branch off and therefore create more flowers. So look, as you can see, they've started branching now. And I don't know that that would have happened without the help of pinching them. See, yeah, you can see almost all of them. They've started 
branching off. So that's why you want to pinch your sweet peas uh, when they're, I don't know, about like seven to nine inches tall-ish so that you'll discourage that apical dominance and you can create bushier plants that then have more flowers. The daffodils are coming out, the early cheer variety. I have so many different varieties though. <laughs> I just love trying too many. So I have these coming out and then look, hyacinths. I didn't get that many hyacinths. I got some blue ones, I forget the name, and some like peachy apricot ones, but there are two of the blue ones right there. Today's lunch is the same one I've been eating all week. It's been really, really delicious. I have some romaine, kalamata olives, cherry tomatoes, chickpeas, uh, sunflower seeds, avocado, and then I saute some yellow bell pepper with some red onion. And I have a couple eggs that I'm gonna put into it as well. And then the dressing that I've been making is lemon juice, olive oil, a little bit of anchovy paste, pepper, and oregano, and that's it. It's got, I guess, quite a few ingredients, but if I buy like one of each, it will sustain for the whole week's worth of lunch, just with that. So it's a pretty inexpensive lunch as well, which is nice. So it's quite tasty, highly recommend. When I mentioned that I was a little scared about my incoming plant orders, um, this is why, this is definitely not the last. This is the first time I've seen them packaged like this. So I have all of the tubers in one box or a little bag and they've written the name of the variety on the tuber itself with a Sharpie, which is kind of brilliant actually. So TT is totally tangerine and yeah, that's really cool. That's a neat idea. Saves on space for sure. And like packaging a bunch of tubers separately. That's a nice idea. Do you guys want to know something? crazy. I have not purchased a single bra, not one bra, since I've moved to New York City. All of the bras that I have are bras that I purchased before I moved here. And then weirdly enough, in my first, well not my first, I guess my second New York City apartment, uh, when I started doing Vlogmas, like when I started podcasting, that apartment I lived in then, um, a box was misdelivered to my apartment and it happened to have bras that were exactly my size. I tried to get in touch with the company and they're like, just keep it. So I kept it. And those were two bras that I've gotten since I've been in New York. So I, needless to say, I need bras. The other ones have all died. Um... The underwires have broken. I've replaced the underwires in a lot of them. Like, I have made them last, but it is time for some new ones. <laughs> that is so embarrassing. It's so weird. But, um, yeah, so since I haven't purchased a bra in over 10 years, because I am coming up on my New York City, uh, I think this year, maybe it was last year, actually, it was my 10-year anniversary. I don't, I can't remember. It's either been nine years or 10 years since I've lived here. And... Um, I don't really know like what size to order. You guys know what it's like with bra shopping. If you're somebody who wears bras, it's like every brand has a different size range. Um, they fit differently. I'm like sort of in between sizes often anyway with tops. So it's just like, yeah, it's a faff. So I've ordered brand or bras from four different brands and I'm going to try them all on. I'm not going to like model them for you or anything. Don't worry. But yeah, I'll let you know um, my thoughts once they arrive and which ones I like. And But again, it's such a personal thing. You just never know. But I've, I did some research, some Googling about which brands to try. I'm trying um, Third Love, 
uh, Harper something, I can't remember, I'll put it on the screen, Cup and Journal. So we'll see. If you have any recommendations, leave them um, please in the comments below about like favorite brands. I would love to hear from you because like I said, I haven't purchased any bras in like over 10 years. So <laughs> that tells you um, how I take care of my stuff and I mend it and I fix it, but sometimes it gets a little ridiculous. I've finished up with work for the day, so I'm out in the garden and I'm about to plant my sweet peas. So right at the entrance here, I'm gonna put a little like wall of sweet peas, but not too far back because there's a rose back there and I don't want to like shade out the rose. So I'm gonna be planting a little short wall of them right here. And then of course on my stick forge trellis back over there. And we'll see how far we get with the planting and how many of them. I'm sure I'll have some left over still. Um, but yeah, we'll figure it out. Sweet peas need something to climb. So I got this uh, nylon netting that hopefully I can use um, every season until it kind of wears out. So I have some of that, the whole roll of it. Now I just have to figure out which varieties to put where. I have like 10 different varieties of sweet peas that I got. Most of them are shades of like periwinkle, sort of, and then I have some white ones. Uh, and then I think one of them, yeah, this one right here, is like a pop of like super hot pink, which could be fun to see right as you walk into the garden. Yeah, I just need to decide which ones to put where. The first sweet peas are planted. I've got about a third of my total stock planted on this little wall right here. They're probably, probably not probably, definitely too close together, but <laughs> that's okay. Man, I'm so excited. I don't know why I even bother labeling which ones are which because I just like mix them all up in here anyway. So yeah, it'll just be a surprise. They're in. I don't have too, too many left. I'd say I planted about 75% of them. So I could probably find a space for these over at the Arbor, Gord Arbor Garden, or I'm considering putting a few of them right here. We'll see, we'll see. I'll leave them in my plant nursery for now. Night two of Estella. Night three, actually. Pork with charred cucumbers and leeks. <laughs> and a cherry tomatoes with dried shrimp flakes and garlic. What? What, what are you doing? I am making tomato water. God, this cookbook is weird. It looked good. It seemed so good. I don't know about this one. I don't know. We do, we should make a reservation at Estella to try it out at their restaurant. Maybe this is one where the cookbook just does not translate. Yeah, maybe. It's needlessly complicated, which is what you said earlier. And I feel like that is so, so true. Okay. What? What? Treat time? Treat treats? Treat treats? Treats, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Sit. Yeah, good job. Are you harvesting your tomato water? <laughs> Looks pretty good so far. I'm gonna go wrong with tomatoes and basil. Yeah. But, uh... final product we have from page 201 of Estella pork with charred cucumbers and leeks and what was that one that was the tomatoes with uh, shrimp flakes tomatoes 
tomato salad with shrimp flakes. It's colorful, looks pretty. We didn't use shrimp flakes though. I was just gonna put pancho on top. Oh, for some little crisp? Yeah. We added some fish sauce to make up for it. Okay, verdict, tomato salad, delicious. Hard to go wrong with tomato, basil, cilantro, garlic, garlic. yeah. How are the cukes and the leeks? Cukes are good. Mm-hmm. Leeks are fine, they're good. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, how's the pork? Bland. Not worth the effort? Mm -mm. Yeah. It is shocking to me that this had a brine and a marinade. It is so flavorless. Cannot recommend this cookbook. Do not get it. Don't get it. everyone another beautiful day in the garden just coming to check on the arbor garden all of the roses are leafing out it's crazy the difference one year can make look how big these are compared to <laughs> the new bare roots so insane just one year of growth and I cut all these back by quite a lot actually like a lot of these were probably like yay tall. I wish I could take over that planting space too. <laughs> I'm not sure if my hydrangea made it or not. Which is kind of a bummer. I really loved that hydrangea. I would think it would be shooting by now, but it's not. Maybe I should cut it back to spur it into growth. I don't know. You leave for an hour and tulips decide to go ahead and open up. Look at it. Look at it. Exotic Emperor. Or wherever you get your podcast. Subscribe, follow, and enjoy. We're at Adult Disneyland. IKEA! We're returning some stuff that Andrew got to replace it with a different size cabinet. He's kind of doing an office reno right now. IKEA shopping trip. Got some things that we needed and also some things to put on my like personal list of things to look out for. I IKEA I feel is kind of hit or miss for us because it's not really our style. Like it's a lot more modern than Do our really style like is. Stuff? Yeah. So we tend to go for things that like yeah, like look older. But it's they have like a lot of good basics and stuff like that. So got some pillowcases and some towels. I'll, I'll show you when we get home. But now we're headed off to find a happy hour to get a snack mostly because I haven't eaten enough today and I'm hungry. So we're headed to one of our favorite spots. It's called Blueprint. It's a cocktail bar. They make really good cocktails and they do have um, a food menu, but I've never tried it before. So I'm interested in giving that a go. today. Sun is shining. Supposedly it was going to rain. I don't see a cloud in sight. So we're at Blueprint. I got a 
cocktail called My Dear Julius. It's delicious. And what was yours called? Do you remember? Uh, the Kickstarter. Kickstarter. Coffee. Coffee flavor. Delish. Hello. We just got back from uh, from Blueprint, and I'm about to give the plants in the greenhouse a little bit of a water. It's about to rain. I've said it's like clear blue skies, not a cloud in the sky, but then all of a sudden, clouded over, so it spoke too soon, it seems. So yeah, the plants are gonna get watered outside just fine, so I'm just gonna water some things in the greenhouse. I brought a book out here with me. I'm almost finished with it, as you can see, so I may like get a chair from the basement and just sit in the greenhouse and read while it rains, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. The latest daffodils open today. This is a variety called Bridal Crown. I think I like the early cheer ones just a little bit better. The Bridal Crown ones are slightly different in that they have this yellow more yellow center compared to the early cheer, but they're still really pretty. Inside, I have my book. I open the windows. It's pouring rain outside. This is the coziest. It's my favorite. Andrew's painting right in front of me. It's a perfect afternoon. Hello. Hi. So, in a magical turn of events, Andrew apparently has an Owen Wilson impression I've never heard of before until now, and it was yeah, magical. Neither am I. <laughs> and secondly, we're headed to this bar. I actually already forgot the name. I'll tell you in a second when I can check again. But we're headed to this bar to meet uh, my friend Emily and her roommate Ty, and we're gonna go see some live music. I have no idea who's playing there. I've never been to this bar before, but it's a nice little walk away. So. We're headed there now, walking past Prospect Park, right there. All these beautiful apartment buildings in Park Slope. It's a beautiful evening. It's gonna be fun. Plugging my ears from it being too loud, I was like, okay, it's time to ski daddle. Time to act our age. Yeah. <laughs> and you're gonna do Staten Island Alicia Keys. Ready? I, you know, 
You already teed up the Owen Wilson impression. I don't know. I'm not just a dancing monkey. You are. You're my performing star. In New York. Concrete jungle where dreams are made of. <laughs> These lights will inspire you. <laughs> Good morning, happy Friday. I am freshly washed because Andrew and I are going to be having like a little date day today. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, we have the day off from work today. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, of course, we'll take you along, but I wanted to show you the stuff that I got uh, from Ikea yesterday. There's not like a ton, but you know, a few things while we were there. So the first thing I'm gonna show you are these pillow shams. So the living room is extremely green, which I like. We have, you know, the velvet green couch and we did the green walls and the green bookcase. There's a green rug. But now, and the plan always was to start bringing in more patterns and a little bit of other colors. Red, actually. And as long as it's kind of like a rusty red, I think it works really well with the other colors in the room. So we're trying to bring in more textures and other colors that are not green to like balance it out. I still love how it looks, but this was, like I said, always the plan. So we got two of these. Um, I'll link everything in the description box below. So it's this kind of like rusty red color, two pillowcases, and then got this stripe one, again, to start bringing in the pattern. The back is really cute. It's got this kind of button up detail right here. There was another one that I really liked, but Andrew wasn't so keen on. It had like, it was a beige cushion that was like fringe and had like kind of tan and raffia kind of like fringe look to it. And I really liked it because it needed some texture, but Andrew wasn't super keen on like the diamond pattern it had on it, which I, I agree with that. It was just that, you know, it's Ikea, so it is uh, definitely affordable. But I think I'm gonna look on Wayfair for something similar, just a different kind of pattern but I really liked that one but we didn't didn't get it and then this one right here which is kind of like a sagey color which I know is like another green but it works really well with these so these three I think are gonna go in here we want four the last one oh yeah I told you we're gonna get the woven one but there's also I really would like to bring in some sort of like Turkish rug looking pillow something with a heavy pattern on it, like I said, to again start bringing in more patterns. We're also on the lookout for another kind of Turkish or Oriental style rug because we want to do like a mixture of rugs in here, like layered rug effect to kind of give like a record store feel almost. I don't, I don't know. I'm not explaining this very well, but hopefully you'll see the vision come together as it happens. And then the last one we got, let me open this real quick because it's kind of hard to see this one in the packaging. It's another kind of red velvet pillow. And this one's like a dark red. So it's kind of similar to this one, but a little bit more cranberry-ish. So it's still on the warm side, I think, for reds, but yeah, really like that one. So we'll kind of mix and match. We also need throw pillows for our bedroom. So if any of them don't work in here, we can always put them in there. And then the next thing that I think I'm probably most excited about, we have probably, I don't know, a million different tea towels in our kitchen. Half of them are super crappy and non-absorbent. They just don't work very well because they're more like the fashion towels and not anything that actually like lifts liquids. So I wanted to just like start over a clean slate, have towels that all match, solid color, and we got these. They're like a gray brown color and I think they're actually meant to be like a small bath towel, like a face drying or hand drying towel, but I think they're going to work perfectly in the kitchen. And I love this like waffle knit texture, so it'll bring some nice texture into the kitchen. Yeah, so we got eight of these. And then Andrew got two of these, I don't know really what you call them, just like curio cabinet things. We already have a few of them. This is the medium size. They come in three different sizes, like one really big one, one that's smaller, but this is like the perfect size to display the miniatures that he 
paints. So he kind of likes to do like some featured ones in his kind of office or dining room area on top of that kind of wall of bookcases with the plants that's in there. I don't know if you've seen that before, but it is in there. And he features kind of like favorite minis that he's painted in these little glass curio cabinet kind of or curiosity cabinet style displays. And then two more things. I got a new, um, what do you call this? just call it like a meat tenderizer but like flattener whenever you have to like flatten meats to be like the same width uh for even cooking we have one but ours just like gets i don't know it's it's all metal on ours and so anytime you hold it it just releases this like charcoaly powder all over your hands and it will get on the meat too if you don't cover everything with plastic that can't be good for you. So we're gonna get rid of that one because I feel like it's not safe and we replaced it with this new one. And then lastly, a vessel, you know, we're collecting these for the wedding anyway, love the green. Not necessarily that it will go in here once we're, you know, not using it for the wedding, but it could go in a variety of places in the house. And yeah, I just thought that was a really cute vessel. Thank you, by the way, so much to everybody who suggested I could paint the vases that I showed you in the last video. I did not even think of that. So thank you so, so much. That was a great idea that I can paint the outside of them, duh. <laughs> and yeah, that's the Ikea haul. Our first stop was coffee. And now we're headed into the city to go to Renert's, Renert's, Renert's Gallery. I've been wanting to go there for so long. Andrew got an ad on Instagram. His ads are so much better than mine. Fantastic. Oh, it's so annoying. But um, it's this amazing like vintage poster or like vintage kind of like graphic design store in a way. Um, not graphic design, but just like, yeah, vintage posters. So they have like the vintage drink posters and uh, I don't, I don't know, like Toulouse Lautrec style stuff, then you know stuff like that. And I've been wanting to go for ages, so now we're finally gonna go to Renner's Gallery, and then after that we're gonna go to another gallery that you've been having your eye on called uh, Arcadia. Yeah. What's at Arcadia? Uh, they're mostly like contemporary art, but um, Can you move your mask out a little bit. Thank you. They're mostly like contemporary art. But uh, I really don't like modern art, so their their taste happens to be um, a little bit like neoclassical. It's mm -hmm. it's like a very specific thing that I find hard to find in modern art. I've never um, I haven't even looked at what they have, so I'm not even at all familiar with. I don't think you've shown me what's at art. I've, I've shown you um, that one artist that does like the hyper realistic. Oh, uh, like the little ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they're like photographs, but painted. But painted. It's like the, the skill level is insane. Yeah. Okay, well, cool. Um, and I think her name is Megan Elizabeth Reed. Is she there right now? In a, or... She's like always got stuff. Okay, there, so. cool. Well, we'll show you. But yeah, gallery day. Chelsea, close to Union Square, walking to Renner's Gallery. them whose address we have. I know where George Lucas lives. Well. <laughs> we know where George Lucas lives. Yes. So in Renard's gallery, he was a buyer. His name and address was attached to two uh, pieces of artwork in there. Obviously, you're not going to share it, but for free. Have, yeah, <laughs> for a price. <laughs> um, yeah, so now we have George Lucas's address. Pretty cool. Yeah. I Left 
Renards Gallery. It was so cool. Everything I expected and more. They didn't have as much stock there as they normally do because they just did an auction in March and their next auction isn't until July. So they didn't have as much there as they normally did, but it was still really, really cool. Highly recommend a visit if you're into like vintage antique posters. Lots of Toulouse-Lautrec in there, which was amazing to see. Yeah, so now we're headed uh, to a lunch spot called Pastis. It's a French restaurant and they have this really good salad that we like. <laughs> so we're gonna go there for lunch, get a salad. Alright, so it was a two hour wait for outside seating. Obviously not going to do that, but 30 minutes for indoor. That's New York for you though. VR experience. Interesting. Uh, yeah, a little disappointing, but... Yeah, it has, you said, twice the range of Teslas? It has twice the range of a Tesla, mm -hmm. a similar size, and it has uh, slightly more horsepower. Okay. But, like, it's enormous, it's though. More horsepower? It's like... Yeah. Yeah. It's like zero to 60 in two seconds. Like, yeah. when do you use that? I, That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I knew they were doing like a luxury car, but I thought it was like maybe a little bit more compact, a little bit more practical than Tesla. More sporty. It's just, it's a huge sedan. Like, I would never want a car, not that I could afford that, but I would not want a car like that in New York City. It's enormous. Parking that would be insane. You'd have to have a garage, a dedicated garage. But it's an electric car, you need a dedicated garage. Jeffrey's Grocery. We're in the West Village now. We have the happiest memories of that place. It was our first post 
lockdown date in New York City. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we were just so excited to be out of the house. I wore what I refer to as my strawberry dress and they gave us extra oysters and like our whatever we ordered. I forget like a like, uh, king, like king crab or something like that. I don't know. But they gave us extra because they said that we had a good vibe. arrived at Arcadia Gallery. This is one that Andrew's been wanting to see for quite some time. Let's check it out. back from our date day so many tulips blooming come see Happy Saturday. It has been such a leisurely morning of reading on the couch with the cats, Andrew painting, and now I'm out in the garden because I'm gonna try to plant my ranunculus and my anemones today. I have to meet some friends, one of my closest friends is in town this weekend, so I'm meeting her for dinner. I'm so excited about that. And um, yes, I only have like a few hours before I have to go for that, but let's do some gardening. Well, bad news. So I started planting the ranunculus and the anemones and started digging and saw what I thought were root maggots. Turns out Andrew look, and Andrew's out here with me, looks up close, they're termites. There's so many of them all over the back portion of the garden and they have also kind of started making their way out here. It's not a new issue, unfortunately. A lot of the buildings on this block have had to be treated for termites before and they treat them and then they come back in like two years and you know, all, all of that really annoying stuff. But it's just kind of gross. Like I feel itchy, like even just being out here right now. I know that's a little bit crazy, but yeah. So now I'm wondering if I should even plant the plants or wait until after they call we've called an exterminator they're coming um monday so that's in two days from now which is good but i'm wondering if i should even hold off on planting the seedlings because a lot of them are even like clustered around some of the new roses that i planted up there so i hope the roses survive especially but i hope any of my plants survive and so now i'm wondering if i should wait to plant anything andrew says he thinks it'll be fine I don't know. I had a few packages come in over here, one of which is this dress that I ordered while I was sick with COVID and it just now arrived. I like where it's going. 
I think it's really a really cool dress. I like the asymmetry on it, but I think it just doesn't fit me correctly. I feel like I should try to make this one. It wouldn't be so hard. It's like, you know, two gathered tiers and then a middle panel that has the slant and then this kind of one shoulder. I need to find a pattern for like a one shoulder bodice like this. I don't have one in my stash already, but I like where it's going and I also like the color. I don't know, I'm on the fence about it. Andrew likes the dress in theory, but thinks it's not, it's ill-fitting for me. What, what do you guys think? Let me know. I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I'm on the fence. I think the main reason I'm waffling on it is because this part right here, it's asymmetrical, it's like high-low, but I feel like it's not extreme enough. The thing that bugs me about it is that this part up here on the high part hits me like right in the middle. It's like not my waist, which is up here, not my waist, which is right here, and my hip is like right here. So it's this weird part where it's hitting me, and I feel like it would be better if it was like up on my waist a little bit rather than hitting me in this in-between point, I feel like this panel would need some adjusting and that would make all the difference in whether or not I like the final garment. But do let me know what you think. Do you like the dress? Should I keep it? Should I return it and remake it myself? Also, the material is like quite shiny. I can't figure out what it is. There's no label in it. I did buy it on Amazon, but it was like a personal, per like somebody's Amazon store. But I can't figure out what it's made out of. There's no label in it. But the material is quite like kind of shiny and it might be, feels like it's potentially a polyester blend. So if I remade it, I feel like this would be great in like a linen. I have a dress that's actually this like exact color that I made myself, but yeah. All right, let me know what you think. I think I've already talked myself into returning it and I should just remake it to my specifications, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Next up is the H&M order. I have this rib knit navy shirt, an absolute win, as are these shorts. They're linen shorts, so they're crinkly, and I'm just gonna have to be okay with that and lean into it and accept it. I think the color is so loud. I love this like red orange poppy color. I think they're amazing, I love it. With like a striped shirt too, could you imagine with these shorts? They're super comfortable. I'm actually considering going back and reordering in other colors too. I absolutely love these, and the top too, very comfortable and breathable. These are two wins for sure. All right, so this is the next skirt. I love the style of the skirt. I've made two skirts like this already, but the problem is like, I, they're only, they're very straight. They're not like kind of voluminous like this one is because of making something with pre-pleated fabric. It's like they cut the skirt first and then pleat it after with the machine. They're I don't know exactly how to do it without, with, and get this volume. I love the color of the skirt but I have a slip on, I had to put a slip on underneath it because you could see my underwear straight through it and you can still see the dark top right here, which is not ideal because I would love to wear like black and cream outfits. I think this looks really cool, but I don't like that I can see the top underneath. I don't know what I can do about that though. Maybe I could add my own lining to it. That's kind of a faff to have to do. Oh, what a bummer. I don't know, I'm on the fence. Maybe I'll fix it myself. This also comes in black, so it wouldn't be a problem with the black skirt, obviously, but I liked the cream one. It's very like kind of spring and summer. Next up is this linen shirt dress. This one's an A. I just don't think it's very figure flattering on me. I don't, I don't love it. Kind of, I don't know, I just don't love it. And last, it's a linen and viscose blazer. And I've been looking for something like this that's a little bit more casual. I have a more tailored uh, jacket that I've made myself. I love it. It's from Friday Pat. Um, no, True Bias. Maybe. What is the name of that pattern? The Jessica Blazer. Closet Core Jessica Blazer. And I love it, but it is more of a tailored fitted jacket, whereas this one's a little more casual so i can imagine this with like jeans and a cute top and i yeah i just really like this kind of blazer look i even like it with this outfit quite honestly i think it helps kind of tone the shorts down just a little bit so this one is an absolute win so these three are a yes i'm back in my regular outfit that i've been wearing all day today i have to 
uh, pause opening my boxes to get ready to meet my friend Callie and Brittany. Um, yeah, so Callie moved to North Carolina. Some of you might remember Callie from uh, Vlogmas several years ago, and actually this previous Vlogmas because she was visiting then too. She's a, one of my best friends and she's in town visiting right now just to see some Broadway shows and uh, she brought her new boyfriend and so I'm going to be meeting him for the first time. So yeah, it's all very exciting, but we're meeting for dinner at a Korean fried chicken restaurant. And so I have to get ready to go because our reservation is coming up soon. So um, I'll open the rest of the stuff with you later though. This is my outfit of the evening. This black dress, an H&M purchase from about a month ago. And then this jean jacket that I have had for eight years at least. And then my purse that Andrew got me when we went to Florence. I've literally used this purse and nothing else for three years now. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I think it's just like these H&M orders, something, it just like ignites this sort of, you know, guilt in me where I'm like, oh, I could have made that or, oh, you shouldn't be purchasing from H&M. It's just, it's such a hard one. And I'm sure as makers, a lot of you probably so in it who watch my channel. And it's hard because yes, I could make a lot of these things, but it takes such a long time to make all of these clothing items and meanwhile like I'm wearing all the stuff that I have in my wardrobe to death because I won't buy anything new because of the guilt trip that I give myself like I haven't purchased bras in over 10 years over 10 years it's just like insane and sometimes I think I take it to like the nth degree in trying to not that I think it's you should like I feel like I should always try to do the right thing when I can um you know, purchasing like the linen shorts and the linen top, you know, because it's just a more sustainable fabric, for example. But you know, that doesn't always happen all the time anyway. Like that dress, I have no clue the first one I showed you what that is made out of. But it's just such a fine line. I'm not explaining myself well and I'm stumbling over my words because I, you know, I've just watched all of the documentaries and I wish I could make every single thing in my wardrobe, but that's a lot of pressure to put on myself also, especially when I like lose sewing mojo, then what do I do? You know, it's like all of my uh, handmade items are some of my most worn pieces, but even those start looking, you know, ratty after a while because it's the only thing I wear and I'm not getting other things into the rotation of items in my wardrobe. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. Do you feel guilty when you shop fast fashion? I mean, I certainly, do how do you manage that you know like do you try to save up for um like more ethical pieces do you only sew your own wardrobe how do you manage those feelings and then also not go you know 10 years without buying a bra like what what's the balance i'm so curious to hear what you guys think about this I've been wanting to go in there for ages.